So this right here is a scratch pad or a drop down terminal, but it's not just any scratch pad. This is ST running the scratch pad and my window manager is BSPWM. And the reason why those details are important is because ST is obviously not known as a scratch pad terminal and BSPWM does not have this feature built into it by default. So how is this actually being done then? Well, what I'm using is an application called T-Drop, and unlike a lot of Scratchpad implementations, this one isn't dependent on the specific window manager. So this is a window manager independent and terminal independent Scratchpad wrapper. So if you don't know what a Scratchpad is, basically it's a toggleable floating terminal that's intended to never be closed. So basically it works as a persistent session. Now it's also used for things like, okay, I'm doing something in my web browser. I want to quickly open up a terminal and then go back to my web browser. Obviously you could open up a new terminal like you normally would, but if you're in a tiling window manager like I am, that's obviously going to change the size of your main window and sometimes you don't really want to do that. Sometimes you just want to have a terminal appear overhead without actually disturbing the contents below it. Now the absolute basic usage of this is pretty straightforward. All we have to do is run T drop dash A and then whatever terminal we want to run it with. Now Alacrity actually is on the list of supported terminals, but as we're going to see, Alacrity sometimes does weird things. So right now, it's just straight up not working. Sometimes it breaks after I change the size of it. Sometimes it breaks for other reasons. But for whatever reason, Alacrity seems to not really like running with this application. It is on the list of supported terminals though, so I presume that it's supposed to work. Now, I would recommend using something like ST. ST isn't on the list of supported terminals, but it does just work perfectly fine. So try something like that or try your XVT or X term or really any other terminal. Alacrity for whatever reason doesn't like to be forced into weird sizes by external applications. So it has the same sort of problem when I'm trying to open up a configuration file. Sometimes if it opens up on a window that isn't empty, it basically just changes the size of Vim to be half the size of the window. So I don't know what's going on there. It seems to just be an Alacrity related problem. And that dash A option is incredibly important. Basically what that's going to do is make it so it automatically runs the window manager hooks for whatever window manager it thinks you're on. And pretty much that's how it actually makes the terminal float. If you want a list of the supported window managers, there is a list over on the GitHub page. For tiling window managers with floating support, it supports BSPWM, i3 and awesome. So if you want to use something like DWM, Qtile or Xmonad, you're going to have to write the hooks yourself, but I'll show you that towards the end of the video. Now, if you're happy with the default size and you don't have to go and change anything from here, but if you do want to go and change it, you have to go and run T drop with the dash M option. And what that's going to do is basically make the sizing aware of the monitor. Now, this does actually slightly break the sizing. As you can see, the right hand border actually goes off the screen. So to go and fix this, we have to go and fix up the width. So if we run the dash W option and then give it 19, 16, so that's 1916 pixels, that should actually go and fix that problem. If we want to go and modify the height, we do that with the dash H option. So as you can see, now we have our border back. But there's also a slight gap up the top here, and we can go and fix that by modifying the Y value. So if we pass in dash Y and then just pass in zero, that should go and fix that. As you can see, the top border is now touching the top of the screen. And you should probably be able to guess the dash X option will let you modify the X coordinate. Now, obviously, you don't have to have it so it appears at the top of the screen like this. You could have it so it's sitting in the center of the screen. But personally, it's a drop down terminal, so I like it to be at the top of the screen. But if you're used to working with things like Rofi as well, which generally appear in the center of the screen, maybe you want to fit it into that theme. But personally, as I said, I don't really think that's that big of a deal. Now, when it comes to the width, height, X and Y, they don't just take pixel values. They can also take a percentage value. So you could do something like this. So this is 60% width. 30% Y and 20% X and as you can see that is going to be horizontally centered and this could be useful if you're running multiple monitors that don't all have the exact same resolution. Personally I wouldn't recommend doing that but if you are in a situation like that then this could make it so the terminal appears in the exact same location on all of the screens regardless of their actual resolution. Now this is obviously useful by itself, but let's say you want to have multiple sessions going on at the same time. Well, if you pass in the dash N option and then give it a number or give it a name, basically it's going to label that session. So this is going to be session zero. Let's go and say run LF in here and let's go and close this one and let's start up a new session. 
and let's just run ls in here and then close this one and then go back to session zero and as you can see lf is still open over here but if you instead prefer to attach it to a tmux session all you have to do is replace the dash n option in here with a dash s option and then give it the name for whatever the tmux session is actually called but i don't have tmux installed so i can't tell you if this works properly or not i'm going to assume it probably works just fine though so the last important thing to mention is hooks. So not every window manager will be supported out of the box and some of them you have to go and write your own hooks to make sure the window is actually going to be set into a floating window. And the way you do that is with a couple of options. So the dash lowercase c and dash capital C are for pre-create and post-create, dash lowercase p and dash capital P are for pre-map and post-map, dash u and dash capital U are for pre-unmap and post unmap and dash lowercase l and dash capital L are for pre float and post float. You may not have to use all of them, but they are all there if you do need to access them. And if I'm not mistaken, map and unmap probably mean to unhide and to hide. Now, if you're looking for a specific example for, say, Xmonad or Qtile, I have no idea. I've never used those window managers. So if there is an easy way to go and make a window floating in those window managers, then you can use these options and make it so T-Drop will work in that window manager for you. And if you want to, you could also go and submit a pull request and make it so that window manager is going to be supported for everyone else as well. And if you're planning to use this yourself, my suggestion would be to set up a key binding for it. So over my SXHKD config, if we go down to T-Drop, as you're going to see, right here basically when i run super control return it's just going to run t drop dash ma dash w dash y and run it with st obviously i could try to run it with alacrity but as you saw before it breaks sometimes so i'm kind of happy that i've still got st installed right now now some of the tmux people might be saying can't you just use tmux for persistent sessions? And yes, you're entirely right. And tmux does do a bunch of other cool things as well. But if all you want from tmux is the persistent sessions, this is a much easier way to do it and a much lighter way to do it. Obviously, if you want to use all the extra features of tmux, go ahead and use those. But for me, I don't really care about them. So I think this is a much better solution. So let me know, do you think this actually has any productive use, or is it just a gimmick that isn't really that useful? Personally, I'm going to keep it around for a while and see how I feel about it, but if you see it in future videos, I guess you can work out what my opinion was. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to my supporters, Joachim Kulbinian, Andrew Craig, Nathan Montazar, Joseph, Peter D. Road, Tony Donald, John, Marek Mikkel, Nephites, Begin, Thais, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be some links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, Cointree, all of that stuff. And my podcast is also down there as well. That is Tech of a T, and that is available on Library and YouTube, and it's just hours upon hours of just rambling nonsense. I've also got this channel available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute as well. So if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube, those options are there for you. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.